Hey, here's Steve Tech. I'm Steve. I'm going to show you some dyno stuff today. So I'm going to show you exactly how things are working, uh, how the dyno absorber uh, functions, and even give you a heads up and let you in some top secret information of how I actually do stuff and how I've made these absorbers to hold the kind of horsepower that they do hold. Now, this is the one that uh, I just broke. Uh, I just repaired it right now, and I just knocked out a couple bearings in it. So uh, it has two bearings up in the front here, one bearing in the back, and this is these are the rotor sections. They're inside uh, shaft, and then water in, water in a vent, and then water out is on the very bottom. But I'll show you that on the tear apart version, and then kind of explain how things actually work and what's going on inside an absorber. Now there are different kinds of absorbers. This is a uh, basically a straight vein uh, absorber, Stutzka style, or, and this is just really heavily modified here. And I'll show you how I'm building my billet absorbers uh, right over here. Now, uh, some of the first things you'll notice is that lots of people are still using drive shafts. This is actually the drive shaft. This is motor side, this is absorber side, so this little uh, plate here, which I just had made too, uh, this bolts to the actual shaft that's in here, just like so, okay? I mean, there's pieces and parts that are missing here, but this is the absorber shaft right here. All right, this shaft right here. Now we actually make this because I make these flanges and this actual shaft because I got tired of breaking these things all the time and tired of spinning the shaft on there because they used to use a tapered hub. Um, so this is where the rotor goes. Rotor goes here, bearings, bearing right there. And then this basically goes here and there's a flex plate right in the way. Then on the motor side, if you go backwards here, on this side, uh, on, we don't just run a regular flywheel on the dyno, we actually run a spring-loaded uh, plate. So real similar to a clutch plate. In fact, it basically is a really overrated clutch plate. Uh, no slippage or anything, but that spring-loaded center absorbs the harmonics. So it keeps harmonics, all the harmonics, from transmitting through the shaft, through the shaft. Because those harmonics break stuff, uh, add to a lot of problems. In fact, I have been using this style spline shaft uh, for a few years now because after any and all drive shafts, typical drive shaft with U-joints, after breaking drive shafts, breaking U-joints, sending drive shafts through the ceiling, through the truss, and through the roof of one of my shops, I stopped using those things. Now everything has to be lined up perfect, which is the other reason why you don't see uh, if you see a lot of other people's dyno videos, you'll see the motor go rock. In fact, if you look at some of my real old videos, you'll see the motor rock from the torque. Uh, in all my new videos, you don't see the engine move at all. I mean, it's you, outside of listening to it, you can't see it run. Well, that's because the engine is, is lined up perfectly with all the shaft here. This is all lined up perfectly, and in order to do that, we have to have it very secure. So everything is solid, there's no movement in the cart, no movement in the motor, uh, so we can keep everything aligned. Okay, So that's just on the shaft side of things, and I'll be putting this all back together here in the next day or two. The absorber is all done, but I just have to get everything back together in the, in the, uh, the stand. So now how does this dyno work, or how does the absorber work? Okay. It is, uh, basically, this is a fairly inefficient, but uh, still usable torque converter, okay? So, now this is a, a dual rotor, so there's a rotor here that goes in there, and then there's a rotor on the other side. That's what this dual rotor setup is, all right? One, two. That rotor's right in there, and that rotor's right in there, all right? So what happens, is water comes in through here, comes in down towards the center of the rotor. There's a shaft that goes through here. And as water comes through here, the centrifugal force of this spinning inside here spins all the water to the outside. And as this water comes up through the outside, it tries to fill up these passages, these little uh, 
and, well, we'll just call them passages there and then passages here. And as that water is full in there, it, the absorber is trying to shear and actually cut the water. And that's what's applying load. So the more water that's in here, the more pressure that's in here, the less we let escape, the more load it applies. So as this is trying to load it, just like what a torque converter does, then this absorber, which is on pillow blocks, show you right here. So then that's what it is internally. So this absorber, which is on a pillow block bearing here, like this, okay? So there's no, it's just freely moving. It's trying to twist. So you're trying to, it is actually trying to twist this absorber down from the rotational force and the water shearing itself inside all that is applying force to it the load so it very much is exactly it pretty much is a torque converter uh, like what's in your car a little inefficient because it doesn't have to do all the things of a regular torque converter and we have to load it in different speeds and different uh, ratios and backwards forwards because this my dynos will run backwards too so long complicated story there but uh, that is the basics of how that works now some of the insights of what we do uh, you'll notice here we'll go over and we'll look at the my number one dyno and I'll show you something here so as we come over here this dyno I've only modified to about a 3,000 horsepower level so I have the same shafts inside I have all of that but as you can see water comes in splits off goes on this side goes on this side for each rotor and then this is a vent okay so let's go back over oh and down here you can see the valves those are the outlet valves so we monitor and control how much water leaves the dyno and the way that we do that is we measure temperature so how much temperature it creates by that frictional force of the water shearing against itself generates heat obviously we're shearing water Okay, same reason why your torque converter in your car builds a lot of temperature. It's shearing the oil. Okay, so what we do is we control how much, similar to like a, for pro modified guys or somebody like that, dump valves, a dump valve for your converter charge pressure. So we're doing that all via here uh, with the outlet valves of how much we're dumping off and then inlet valve of how much we're putting in and how much pressure we're putting in. Okay. But you can see here, this is a single end, single end on a dual rotor setup with a center vent. That's a typical deal outside of the internal modifications that I do on these. Uh, that's a standard way the dynos uh, operate. So let me go show you what we've done over here on my big dyno and the bigger horsepower stuff. 